We're still waiting for the guest of honor, so we still have a few minutes. Eleven o'clock, right on the nose. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Steve Levy. I'm the director of athletic communications. Um, I've been here 38 years um, as an employee, and um, you know, one of my um, one of my notes in the in the press release regarding um, Pete's uh, home games is he's won 71.4 percent of his home games at UMBC, and I think I've seen 99.2 percent of those victories. Um, Glad to see some of the uh, some of the alumni here today. And 32 years ago, UMBC soccer looked a heck of a lot different than it looks right now. Um, a lot of you can see out into the uh, into the the new refurbished UMBC stadium. Um, that was not the original home of UMBC soccer because some of the games were played on the practice field back in the uh, late 70s. But it became the home of UMBC soccer throughout the late 70s, early 80s, and actually through the 90s. Um, that beautiful complex that you can see to your left uh, looks nothing like it looked back in uh, 1991. Um, it was a no lights, first of all, uh, grass field. And to say that uh, it was difficult for a soccer coach to judge his players uh, it might be an understatement because the crown of that field was so high that Coach Karinji, looking across the field, could only see his players from the waist up. Um, definitely could not uh, judge the dribbling skills uh, when we first played at, um, at, uh, at UMBC Stadium. Now, obviously, we have one of the best facilities in the country at Retriever Soccer Park. Um, a couple other notes. Um, one of the things, uh, Pete, before he was a coach here, obviously had a, had a brilliant playing career at the University of Baltimore. Um, unfortunately, the University of Baltimore ended its athletics programs, and if you look at the statistics uh, in the NCAA Division II record books, since the University of Baltimore like, no longer responds to surveys, um, Pete's name, unfortunately, has been taken out of the Division II record books. So... For the record, I have looked it up, and Pete's 70 goals scored at the Division II level is still 23rd all-time in the history of NCAA Division II. So, and one of these days before I retire, I'm going to get his name back in that record book. Um, my last note um, before moving on to more important things is, um, you know, Coach Karinju is always known as an offensive coach. Um, one of the first quotes he told me is he'd much rather lose a game 5-3 than lose it 1-0. Um, however, uh, the mark of a, of a great coach is obviously seeing you know, both sides of, of the field, offense and defense. And two of the best teams, probably the best teams we've had in UMBC soccer, the 1999 team um, led the nation in goals against average. And the two, uh, 2014 team, to get to the Final Four, the, the College Cup, four consecutive road shutouts. So obviously Coach knew a little bit more than offense, knew how to put together a complete team, and that's why his teams have been so successful. So without further ado, I want to bring on UMBC's Director of Athletics, Brian Barrio. So I want to be pretty brief because I know who you came here to, to hear from today. But um, you know, first of all, I want to thank everybody who came, and I know um, Pete, he'll tell you, but he's this week he's been blown away by the, the outpouring of support, and seeing this, this room full doesn't surprise me, uh, because that's the kind of impact he's had on everybody he's worked with. Um, so again, thank you for being here. I know there's a couple of alums here. Thanks for coming, um, and certainly the media. Um, one thing I can tell the alums who are going to watch this, uh, probably, and I'm going to say this because I know Pete won't. Um, is that Pete talks about you guys in a way that, uh, you know, you can feel the love he has. Um, and obviously one alum more than anybody else's son, Petey. Um, but, I, but so often I'll be talking to Pete, um, and because he knows everybody in Baltimore, 
you know, we'll, we'll be, no matter what the topic is, he goes, oh, I got, I got an alum who does that. I got an alum who owns a place like that. And you can just see in his eyes how proud he is of what all of you have gone on to do after you've been here. And I know that his influence on the soccer field is part of what makes you all so successful afterwards. So please know you're all there in his heart. And, I, and uh, you know, Pete's not the most – I wouldn't describe Pete as the most new age, touchy-feely guy in the world. But, uh, but I'll tell you, you can see it when he talks about you all. So – Again, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this. This week, um, as we've talked about Pete's decision, I've spent a lot of time trying to kind of put it in perspective just to wrap my head around his career and the success he's had and the longevity. Um, and if you, as I told the players the other day when we met with them, you know, if you look at my hair, you see gray hair here. Um, I was a freshman in high school, Pete's first year coaching here. And I talked to the team the other day about just what that means in terms of commitment um, to retain that passion for that long a period of time and to get that many reps as a coach. That's what makes you so great. I mean, we talk about things like the 10,000 hour rule um, and just the commitment to your craft. Uh, and there's a reason why he took a little school in Catonsville and went to the final four. It's that commitment. It's that ability to maintain, um, you know, maintain his passion for the game. Um, and keep learning. And uh, so it's, it's beyond impressive trying to put it in perspective, and you, can, you almost can't even wrap your head around it. But um, it's, it's just an incredible, incredible thing that he's done here. You know, we in athletics are really lucky to work in this field. And like anywhere else, there's, there's good and there's bad and there's happy and sad. And, you know, one of the things that's always tough in athletics is, you know, more so or quicker than in other fields – Time goes by and it passes everybody by. And, and uh, you know, Tom Brady, I thought, was the one exception. He retired this week. Um, but you think about, I think the great, great thing that we get to see every once in a while is, is just, again, every once in a while you see somebody whose career transcends time. And they kind of beat father time in that way. And what I can say about Pete is, you know, most of us are going to walk away from our careers and, you know, at some point we'll be forgotten. Um, 50 or 100 years from now, if you talk about UMBC soccer, you're not going to be able to do it without talking about Pete Karinji. And that's, I mean, that's why we do what we do. And uh, to be a witness to that is pretty special. So, and again, on a personal note, um, I got here in 2019. Pete was one of the first pe people that I met. And his warmth and his charisma um, – was awesome from day one. He was, he's been a huge supporter and friend to me and a colleague. Um, and I know all of you, you know, know what kind of warmth he brings and the charisma he has. And, uh, I can't, uh, there's nothing that would give me a higher pleasure than introducing him right now. So Pete Karinji. Thank you all for coming here. Um, obviously, uh, it's a, bittersweet time. Um, I'm excited about what's going to happen moving forward. I'm also sad because I'm leaving my players. Um, it, it's really funny when I think of how I got here, and, and it's a great story, because UMBC was the least likely place for me to ever end up. And I eventually fell in love with the place. My children both went here. They both graduated from here. Um, obviously, I made my mark on the school, but it wasn't like that. If we go back to 1974, which a lot of you weren't even born back then, I was playing at the University of Baltimore coming off of a 20-goal freshman season, Final Four uh, MVP season, playing for the local University of Baltimore team, beat UMBC every time we played them. Um, UMBC had some really good teams with some great players. The first game... I played that summer, summer league, played against a six foot four defender from UMBC, scored three goals against them. Summer league, I didn't brag, I didn't do nothing. The first game we played UMBC, the words out that they're going out to get Karenji, he did. First 10 minutes of the game, cracked me, um, broke my leg, out for the season. Sophomore season, sophomore slump. Hated UMBC from that point on. Um, words can't describe, you know, you're a college player, you're excited, you're looking forward to the season, and the mere fact that anybody mentioned the word UMBC, I would like, I rooted against every team they ever had here. And 
it's sad to say that now, but the Lord kind of brings you around. And obviously where I'm at today, but 74 turned into 1990. I was coaching the Maryland Bays pro team. We won the championship. I was a little always intrigued by UMBC, but to be honest with you, Essex Community College where I was working, we were in the nationals, we were in the finals. Um, we had guys that went professionally. We had a great program. There was a guy over here named Dr. Charles Brown who I heard was intrigued with me. I was intrigued with him. I knew it had a lot of potential. It had zero facilities, um, but it came over here and uh, we just, it clicked. And from that point on, it's clicked. And fast forward to 2014, there's some members of that team here. We're playing on ESPN. They're talking about the school in Catonsville, UMBC, Final Four team live on ESPN and a team that really should have, could have won the national championship that weekend. And it kind of really put our soccer program on the map but we always knew that we could compete with anyone, and it really wasn't any school that ever came here and played us, whether it was the Big Ten, whether it was the ACC, you name it, they played us here. They were going home with a, either a, a hard win or they're going to get their ass beat, and nine times out of ten that would happen. So I'm really proud of that. The guys are here. Obviously, my first team, we played out here on that field over there. Jason Dieter, Bobby Mamula, Bobby Wagner, First team All-American, played center back, unheard of, scored 13 goals as a center back. We talk about attacking soccer. That's attacking soccer when you bring out your center back and he scores 13 goals. First game, we're playing a team, I, to this day, no offense to anybody from the school, Shepard, I've never heard of them, but that was on my schedule. We're playing Shepard, UMBC. I just came back from a press conference with the pro team, national champions, Shepard, there was 14 people in the stands. 12 of them were my family from Hollandtown, and the other two were the two janitors that they, we asked to stop and watch the game. We're losing one to nothing, five minutes in, and I never forget how I felt. Damn, did I make the wrong move? What am I doing here? Um, so I did, I, we won the game, we won the game big. We had a tremendous season. We won 15 games that year. The guys literally went from a, a school that uh, the first five or six games, they would say, Coach, last year we played and we did really well. You know, we played hard and we played and, well, how'd you do? Well, we lost, but for 70 minutes, we outplayed them. And that was the mentality that they had going into that. And I remember I kept thinking, they keep talking about how well they played, how well they played, but they were losing. And we had to really change that mentality into um, we were going to win. And we won 15 and 5 that year. Two years later, we were 15 and 3. And from that point on, we really took off um, and had great success. And I'm very proud of those guys for always being there for us, um, as well as the guys that are here this year, a lot of guys that are here from this year's team who fast forward, grade point average is a 3.5, the highest we've ever had. APR, 1,000, um, graduation rate was fantastic. Um, on the portal, no one left that could have left and played for another school other than someone uh, who has a chance to go to graduate school. So I think I'm leaving in a really good spot. I'm leaving a really good team behind that's made their mark, and I really expect no pressure on them, but really expect to watch them play next year in a championship game and look forward to them getting their rings. Um, I've been talking about this this uh, retirement for the last four days, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of talked out. I could sit here, I know Steve said at my one acceptance speech, I talked for 20 minutes, and it seemed like I was up here for five, so I'm not gonna be up here much longer, but to thank all the people that I've been involved with for 32 years here, I'd be here all night and all day, and I really don't wanna do that, but there's certain people I really do need to thank. First person was, Dr. Freeman Obrowski, because him and Greg Simmons, every time we ever went to them and discussed what we needed for soccer, they were always there to support us. That's something that's huge when you think about how far we've come. Um, and I say, because he was the big dog, he's well known nationally, but he always had time for us from a soccer program. And he helped get this building for us. And he helped put the athletic department on the map. He's no longer here, but I thank both of them. Dr. Charles Brown, because he's the one who was intrigued by me. I was intrigued by him. Uh, Dr. Brown didn't have 
um, probably the resources that we have now, but he did a great job, and anybody back then understands how important he was to our program. Um, he has the enthusiasm that we had, and he was always strong and very supportive of us. Um, obviously, I'd like to thank Brian Vario. Brian came in and was a breath of fresh air for all of us here to work here, and uh, really is someone that you can go in and talk to about anything and be very supportive. Um, you know, and, and that's really important when you're talking about athletic directors and the direction we want to go into. And that's, once again, it's something that I, uh, I really respect and thank you. Steve Levy, he's been here longer than me, and there's not many other people around here that can say that. So uh, him and Gary Wolstetter are the, the old timers now. Um, but I really do thank Steve for all his help and support. Uh, it, it's been a great run with Steve, and he's been very professional when he does. The coaches. You know, I think the most fun I have here, like, I, I, I've been very fortunate. People talk about work. Coaches, we love what we do, okay? And right now I'm looking at around the Baltimore area, and some of them are in here, Gaetan. A lot of our former players are went into coaching, and they're doing great. Brian Rowland, obviously Anthony Adams, uh, Petey Karenji, the third. Uh, they all, they've all went into coaching, and I'm very proud of that. But coaching is a profession that when we come here every day, I enjoy the banter with the basketball guys, with the lacrosse coaches, sit around, we talk sports, we talk about life. Um, and for me, every day to come to work has been fun. And obviously, one guy who I talk to a lot, and we've gotten to be, have a great relationship, is Coach David Bob. I got to single you out because, David, to go in your office, and we talk about everything that's going on around school, the department, life, uh, the track team, soccer team, and in general, and I enjoy our one-on-one -on -one conversations. Finally, and as I said, I'm obviously going to miss some people on this conversation, but finally, I'd like to thank my assistant coach, uh, associate head coach, Anthony Adams, to have someone like him by your side the whole time and be loyal as he has been is very important to me. Um, and I can't thank you enough, Anthony, and what you've done. Um, you know, to, to have that chemistry between me and you all those years and probably have talked to you more on the phone than my wife and anyone else. Um, I'm going to miss those calls. Probably won't miss them because the calls went a lot longer than sometimes I needed and have be. But, uh, but enjoyed that soccer talk. And clearly, uh, I, I enjoyed our time and uh, wishing you nothing but the best in what's going to happen moving forward. And we'll find out very shortly. Um, and also, finally, like to thank uh, one of the kids that Grew up around here. He grew up as a little kid. He committed at an early age when Dr. Brown asked him where he was going when he was eight. Uh, came here, had a great career. It's going to be a hell of a coach. He was a hell of a player, and he's handled it all with class. And obviously, uh, my son, Pete Karenji III. And I'd like to thank my family. Uh, Sue is the unsung hero of our family. She doesn't come out. She doesn't. She'll come watch the games. The first game she ever came to, um, she came and Actually, um, it was, I think it was Brian was playing in goal, and she called me, texted me, and she said, uh, you need to have Brian talk a little bit more in goal. And I went home that night, and I was furious. And I said, you can come to games. You're welcome to come to games, but don't ever text me and tell me <laughs> what's going to happen, because what's next? You're going to tell me that I got to put Petey in, keep him in the game for 90 minutes. That's not going to happen. Um, but, but I'd like to thank Sue. And uh, final, final thought, um, I know a lot of times around here, you know, we're all trying to get things done and trying to upgrade. And some, there's a lot of unsung heroes around here. And Kevin Gibbons O'Neill and Clint do a tremendous job down there on our field. Our field, I think, is one of the best in the country. It's one of the reasons we've done so well. Players love to play down there. The atmosphere, lot 17. Um, has really come on and, and been a great supporters group for us. So I'd like to thank those guys, Lot 17, but I'd like to thank the guys that really do the, the, the hard work down there. And any time we've ever asked them for anything, they've always been there to help us. I know I'm leaving some people out, but I'm, literally I'm tired of talking, and uh, we'll move on. Thank you very much. questions from the media, so um, our first question comes from uh, WBAL's Pete uh, Gilbert. Pete wants to know um, 
what it means to you, what it has meant to you to have such an incredible, um, impactful career in the community in which you grew up in? Well, that's everything. I mean, we have tremendous amount of pride in Baltimore soccer. Um, I think anybody that grew up here and played, going back from when I first started, um, even before that, we have a lot of great players, a lot of great teams. Even to today, the young guys coming up that are coaching, I think all the guys on our team that live from are from the Baltimore area have won national championships. Guys have won, like Gaytime played, coached, Brian, um, a lot, Petey's played, Anthony's played, coached uh, teams that went to the, the highest level. So I think the unique thing about the Baltimore player and the Baltimore area, and I say that and I use probably the metropolitan area and even including the whole state of Maryland, because it's probably one of the best in the country. Um, and I, I think, one, uh, as a, a statement, I think the national team coaches need to come back to Maryland to find some players for the national team. Because if you look at it, when we've had the most success, we've had a Maryland background, players playing, and this year we didn't. Um, but I, I just think it's just that, that mentality that they'll play hard, they play together, um, we may battle one another. It's like brother and sister. You might battle one another, but don't say anything about Baltimore or the state of Maryland when we play against you because we're probably going to beat your ass. Excuse my expression. Last two or three years in our conversation, uh, you came from sports. What were the factors that went into you making this decision? Conversations with Brian. Um, I, I've really, this has been the toughest decision I ever made. And uh, I thought that would have been when I got married, but this is way tougher. Um, but clearly, uh, the decision to retire, I love coaching. I've been doing it since I've, I haven't stopped coaching or playing um, since I was a really young kid. So there's never been that down year. Um, I really thought that the group, the players that we have, have a chance to win. And that really drew me to want to stay more. Um, but also, like I said, I've been real proud of what they have accomplished. And I didn't want to go. You know, like even next year, I think it's going to be a lot of guys that will be graduating there will be done. I didn't want to go another year, and even if we won another ring, which would have been great, I think they're going to do that. And then it would probably have been a, a much more turmoil if I'm retiring next year and then um, a lot more new faces. I think it gives the, the, new, the coaching staff more room to bring in players, continue with what we've done. Um, I take tremendous pride in what we've accomplished and what we're going to accomplish and what we've done. Mm -hmm. Because once again, it's a, it's a Baltimore thing. So I don't want I don't want you know UMBC to drop off, and it's not. Clearly, it's not. Um, they're going to be better than ever, and I, I just wanted that to be as much my legacy for me personally um, than to have the satisfaction of doing it, leaving next year at this time. Um, because it is you know we have I have grandchildren. I want to see them. There's things I want to do, but then again, soccer's in my blood, so I, I'm not. You know, I'm not the retiring type. You're not going to be not seeing me. They're going to probably see me around here more. They'll probably be like, oh, can you get the old retiree, get them out of the offices? Um, but, uh, but I'll definitely be around. I heard they're looking for a color guy on the broadcast. Let's see if you can get a picture. Uh, negotiations. <laughs> Jerron, can you get that checkbook? Come on. Did you think that up before you got here? Or, I mean, it is. <laughs> um, that's, you know, it, it, compare Christina and Petey. You know. I mean, you can't do that, right? And, and, and clearly, I thought the 2014 team continued to get better throughout the year. Um, it, it was a team that at the end when we lost, we should have, the Virginia game, we give up a quick goal. Um, next thing you know, you, you're fighting to come back. But overall, from from the beginning to the end, um, they got better as it went along. Defensively, we got a lot better. We talked about the reputation and the history of a, of a program that likes to go to goal, and yet our defense got us that, that way. Um, and there's a lot of guys that went on to play professionally and are some of the all-time greats. Now, backtrack to 99, we knew we were going to be good. We had a, we had a potent offense. Um, we got on a run from the first day, and I think that team um, was – 
just it was like steamrolling people, just going through it. And the next thing you know, we're playing Duke at Duke, and they're number one, and we have them, and we miss a PK, and you know they push Brian into the goal to score a goal, and the referees are wearing Duke shirts, and I mean you name it, and and we had it against us. Um, but clearly, I think that was a, it's it's no you can't compare the two, and either one could have won. Um, the national championship because it had players that won were big time players and they had great team chemistry and they played well together. Um, and once they start winning, it becomes confidence and you're you don't think you can lose to anybody. So I don't, you know, you want to compare them, I can't compare them. Brian would say it's his team, Gaetan would say it's his team, and they'll argue all night at the Coladas and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. And uh, once again, uh, for the media, we, again, we appreciate you being out here. And Coach Gringy will be available for uh, for one-on-ones afterwards. Uh, just a quick couple of thank yous. Um, thanks to the new media studio for uh, coming out uh, under kind of uh, short notice and um, helping us out with this. Um, our wonderful sponsor, Sorrento, will be here shortly. So please, uh, everyone, uh, is welcome to hang out for a little bit um and enjoy uh enjoy a little bit of lunch i do want to say also i know the alumni have been informed and and brian has uh, let it be known that um you know we're planning on a, a large um april event um you know maybe black tie uh maybe uh maybe part roast maybe part gala but probably a combination of the two but um it will definitely be a, another uh, large event uh, sometime in the spring uh, to really have everyone come in and, and, um, and honor the wonderful uh, head coaching career of Pete Karinji. Um So that's it. Uh, thanks so much, Retriever Nation, and we'll see you very soon.